She has never, what has she proven? What has she done over the last four years? And you cannot make the excuse that she was the vice president and she wasn't in charge of anything. I think that's ridiculous. Um, she is the sitting vice president of the United States right now. She's proven nothing. She's done nothing. She, she, I think she's in over her head. She knows she's in over her head. And nobody who is intelligent, like Mark Cuban, Stephen A., or any of these other guys can tell me they truly believe that she is the better candidate. <laughs> Dana White recently made an appearance on News Nation. And as many of you know, Dana White is a big supporter of former President Trump. In this clip, Dana White goes head to head with Mark Cuban. And things get pretty intense as Dana White really calls out Kamala Harris's campaign. We're going to watch as Dana White takes on Mark Cuban live. And trust me, it's definitely worth watching. I'll be sharing my thoughts throughout. So let's dive into this video of Dana White and Mark Cuban on News Nation and see how it all unfolds. I'm going to have Mark get in. I'm going to have Mark get in, but Dana, Dana, just clarify. Dana, clarify something, and then I'll have Mark Cuban respond uh, if he wants, which I'm sure he does. Dana, can you tell me of a vice president you've ever heard of who did something remarkable on their watch? Not that they did anything. Let me let me tell you this. So go ahead. Think about this. Do, right. Leading up to the debate, um, you know, everybody was talking about that. He's never been sharper. He's on top of his game. You know, I was just in a meeting with the other day. He said, they do the debate. The debate ends and they figure out he's unfit to run. Right. He's the sitting president of the United States. <laughs> he's unfit to run. So now they slide her in. Right. Nobody voted her there. Nobody voted Kamala Harris. If she went up against other Democrats, she would not be in the position she's in right now. Fact. If she went up against other Democrats, she would not be in the position she's in right now. Fact. OK. Well, it's not a fact. They slide her in there. Okay. Really? How did she do last time? Uh, How did she do last she time? Was she was Biden's bad. running mate and they she got 85 million made. votes. Yes, no, so you so you this was a problem. Let me let Mark Cuban get in. Talk to your friend Dana. If you're enjoying this content, please hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Dana, I love you. You're so wrong. Trump inflation was up 25% over the Obama economy he inherited. COVID Ask him about bitch. Yemen, where he decided not to take action and allowed 100,000 people to keep on dying in Yemen. Talk to him about his tariffs. What worked with his tariffs? He had four years to make tariffs work mm -hmm. with China. China kicked his ass. China took him to court, right, because he didn't know how tariffs work, and it hurt the economy. The economy was rolling along, and it was got so hit by the tariffs that his appointment to the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, had to come back in and cut interest rates three times. And then we get to the real point of reckoning, the pandemic. And what does he do? <laughs> he says, if we don't test people the viruses didn't really happen. He holds back on resources, except for Vladimir Putin, to keep people from getting healthy. That is not an accomplished president, Dana. He has not done anything. Mark Cuban raised some interesting points, saying inflation has been up 25%. Yet it's like, why wasn't this a bigger issue? Why didn't grocery prices or other essentials feel as impacted back then? People weren't really talking about high prices under Trump. Now, some are saying the economy is better, while others suggest that it doesn't actually matter that much. It's almost like there's mixed messaging. Either the economy is important, or it's not. And if we say it doesn't matter, then are we subtly implying Trump's economy was actually better? I got to jump in with course corrections here. Uh, <laughs> number one, the real wages, which is really the only economic barometer for the folks, was up 8.2% in the four years Trump was president. 82 across the board for working Americans. Fact. Under Biden Harris, it is around 1%. No COVID pandemic. They have failed. Number two, inflation <laughs> didn't start because Putin and the Arabs did anything. Inflation started, and I don't know whether you know this, Mr. Cuban, but Biden signed in his first week in office at least 20 executive orders, making it harder for every fuel company to harvest their product, whether it be fracking or oil or anything. The fuel company said, holy, you know what? We're going to get hosed because our prices to get the stuff out of the ground are quadrupling. So we're going to do it retail now. That's what ignited it. 
not Putin. They're arguing that real wages went up substantially, about 8.2 percent during Trump's time in office, whereas under Biden and Harris, that increase has only been around 1 percent. They're suggesting this difference indicates a failure of the current administration to deliver for working Americans. The second point they make is about inflation. They argue that it didn't start with external events like Russia or OPEC, but rather was a result of Biden's early executive orders. These, they say, placed restrictions on the energy sector, making it more expensive to extract oil, gas, and so on. Energy companies then raised prices to compensate, which, according to this perspective, kicked off the inflation we're experiencing now. Bill, you're bloviating. Thank you very much. No, I kept right. it pithy. I kept, I kept it. Cuomo understood it. I kept it pithy. I did. There was no big words. <laughs> you're, you're, you're bloviating. The point is, yes, inflation. You think the inflation just started when Joe Biden took office? That is. It was one ridiculous. four when 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 Trump left. Inflation you was think one inflation, four. One I know. It just shows you don't know how inflation. You just don't. It shows you don't know what creates inflation. Yes, gas contributes to inflation. Why do you think Trump is so big on reducing energy costs? Because they contribute to inflation significantly. And beyond that, we huh? produce more energy than we ever have. We produce in more the energy latter now than part when they started to panic, not no! in the beginning. Billy, look it up. Do you know how to use Google? Uh oh. oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, that's where Don't I get my Google. information on Google, right? <laughs> I actually research government records. Whoa, Good. what a concept. Come on, 1.4% uh, when he EIA, leaves office, EIA and it goes to more really than nine in a plan. year. Let's, Come on. Let's bring Dana back into this. Stephen A. Dana, good to see you, buddy. Um, I know. I, uh, yes, YouTube I know. I, Dana, 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 Fully transparent. I don't know Dana, any of these. Dana guys. White Fully and I, and Mark Cuban and I, we're all buddies. Yeah, I've, I've known them all for both the years. Must Dana, be fun. I've got, yes, it is, a lot. Here's the deal, <laughs> Dana. Dana, when, when you speak about Donald Trump, obviously there's a lot of people that, are th that look at him and they say, you know what, he did a lot for the economy. I remember that, you know what, he did exceed the deficit to about $35 trillion. What I would ask you, however, is this. Outside of the economy, what else has, has he done that you would deem positive in your eyes? Well, border crossings are up over 300 uh, percent since crazy. he left office. And, and, and that's not including people that are undetected. Mm -hmm. And you cannot deny that the world was a much safer place when Trump was in office. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below about this heated debate between Dana White and Mark Cuban on News Nation. They really didn't hold back on their thoughts, especially when it came to discussing Kamala Harris's campaign and other key topics. It's always interesting to see such strong perspectives clash, and I'm curious to hear your take on who made the stronger points. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more discussions like this, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton. Looking forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you in the next one.